What's up, y'all? It's Nefertiti, also known as the Corny Rainbow, and today I am going to be doing a sew along with you guys for my new early spring Nomi Pattern 2022. And I'm going to be doing view B and view C. It is this version here with the elastic casing and the shorter skirt. Y'all, I love this look so much. It is just perfect for spring and summer. Like, I don't know about y'all, but I'm trying to be at all the parties, the brunches, in every color possible. We gonna mix and match. You can wear it with some jeans. Like, just do everything with this top and with the bottom. Let's get into the notions that you're gonna need for this pattern. For view A and B, you'll need one eight inch separating zipper. Make sure it separates, okay? You can use a metal separating zipper. You can use plastic uh, separating zippers, whatever you have on hand, whatever you decide, it, it's all good, okay? You're also going to need one hook and eye, and that is optional. One two inch buckle. So these buckles have a metal in the middle, but you can also find these without anything in the middle and you can also get them a little bit longer. And I managed to find a few um, different buckle styles on Etsy, but you should also be able to find them in fabric stores or even online. Two inch is what we're gonna be using for our sew along today. You are also gonna need single fold bias tape. That's gonna be for view B if you're doing the casing, the elastic casing on the sleeves with me. You're gonna need um, three eighths of an inch uh, elastic. If you're doing view C and D, you'll need one nine inch uh, invisible zipper and a hook and eye. I want to talk about the fabric options that you can use for this pattern. So um, on the pattern cover, I actually used bed sheets. You can pretty much use any cotton that you like. The top and the skirt are lined. They're not completely lined. So if you're doing the longer view skirt, the lining actually stop, stops at the second tier of flounce. And if you're doing um, both views for the top, the lining is in the entire um, bodice minus the sleeves. In this sew along, I actually added lining to the entire top because my fabric was a little bit thinner. You can get jazzy with this. You can um, sew the top as with a denim. You can do no lining. You can have so much fun with this pattern. You can hack this pattern. I suggest that you add um, bra cups if you like. So let's get started. For view A and B, you're going to cut out two of fabric and two of lining of pattern piece number one. You're going to need pattern piece number two your yoke front for A and B. You're gonna cut one on the fold of fabric and one on the fold of lining. Pattern piece number three, which is your back, you're gonna cut out two of fabric and two of lining. Pattern piece number four, which is your sleeve, you're gonna cut out two of fabric. Pattern piece number five, which is your sleeve band, you're gonna cut out four of fabric and two of interfacing. Pattern piece number six, which is your sleeve flounce, you're gonna cut out two of fabric for both view A and B. And your guide for your elastic, if you're doing view B with me, you're gonna need pattern piece number seven. You don't need to cut out any fabric, but you will need to use this as a guide for your elastic. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is go ahead and stay stitch the neck edge of your bodice back. And we're gonna go ahead and fold in where we're attaching our separating zipper, uh, five eighths of an inch. All right, so the next thing you're gonna need to do is grab your separating zipper and I had this super long separating zipper on hand, but um, you can get an eight or nine inch separating zipper and it will work just fine. 
I'm placing the zipper tape about 5 eighths of an inch from the bottom edge of the back pattern piece. This is where our placement will be for the zipper, but I'm going to leave just a little bit extra and we will take that off later, but we're going to go ahead and cut the zipper. If you're using a metal zipper um, and you have zipper stops, you can go ahead and add those back to just under um, the seam allowance on your zipper here. Turn the zipper with right sides together and we're lining it up so that your center is covering just a little bit of those zipper teeth, all right? So if you want an exposed zipper, by all means, you can make the zipper uh, slightly exposed. We're gonna pin this zipper down. So with your zipper foot, we're gonna stitch one fourth of an inch from this folded edge here on both sides. Once you have your separating zipper uh, sewn down at one fourth of an inch from the folded edge, we're gonna go ahead and grab our yoke front. And you should have gone ahead and stay stitched the neck edge. If not, go ahead and do that. And we're gonna turn these right sides together and we're gonna match it at the shoulder seam. Go ahead and stitch your shoulder seams at five eighths of an inch and come back. So grab both front pieces and you're gonna match these up on the side seam with right sides together. We're gonna stitch our side seams at five eighths of an inch. Okay, so I've gone ahead and stitched the front at the side seams. So we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna do the same exact thing for all of our lining pieces. Once you have finished uh, sewing your lining pieces together, you're gonna match up your lining and your bodice at the neck edge and at the front piece and we're going to stitch along the neck edge and we're going to clip the inseam and then we're also going to stitch our front pieces together at the top front piece and we're also going to under stitch. All right, so go ahead and stitch everything at five eighths of an inch. All right, so once you have under stitch the um, front pieces and also your neck edge, you're gonna go ahead and trim down your seam allowance and get in those corners. Make sure that you're not clipping um, your stitches. All right, once you have trimmed everything down and understitched, we're gonna go ahead and pin our lower front and back piece. And we're gonna stop right here at the edge of our zipper tape and we're going to stitch at five five eighths of an inch all right so we've got that pin now we're going to move to our front yoke and we're going to match everything up and we're going to pin the lower front of the yoke
So go ahead and stitch your lower front yoke at five eighths of an inch and stitch both sides of your front pieces all the way to your back, stopping at your separating zipper there at five eighths of an inch. Now we're going to trim off the excess on the yoke and also our corners. So we're going to open out the back. So a little lazy sewing method is that we can fold this to the inside, push your zipper, the remaining portion of your zipper um, to the inside. And what I'm going to do is fold in the seam allowance and we're going to do another top stitch right where we initially stitched one fourth of an inch from the zipper. Now you can do this or you can slip stitch. I prefer to just get my zipper foot and go over the existing um, stitches that I have on the outside give everything a good press. And you're gonna do that for both sides of your zipper. All right, so I gave everything a good press. Now we're going to base the underarm. Next, you should have two markings on your bodice front. And that is where we're gonna place our yoke front. So right here at your yoke front, you're gonna edge stitch right on the top of your front bodice piece. So do that for both sides and come back. Now we're gonna work on the center buckle area. Grab my buckle, make sure that I have that about the size that I need to put that through. And what I went ahead and did, and I just did like a basic pleating method here. I got my wonder clips do a basting stitch down the top, and then I'm gonna fold the buckle towards the inside. Your front pieces should have a fold line. We're just gonna slide this through our buckle over the top, bring it through the buckle enough right where your fold line is. So you're gonna top stitch using your zipper foot. Go ahead and stitch down through all thickness on both sides. All right, so I went ahead and sewed down the inside of the front bust uh, bodice pieces. And now we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna work on our sleeves. So I went ahead and finished up one sleeve. So this is how your sleeve should look. Um, I do wanna add that my fabric is a little on the thin side, so I went ahead and I lined the entire sleeve. I'm going to be stitching the side seams together at 5 eighths of an inch. Around the top, we're going to stitch our gathering stitches. And also at the bottom of the sleeve, we are going to do two rows of gathering stitches. Once we have done that, then we're going to add our single fold bias binding. You should have a mark, two markings for your placement, your casing, and it's pretty much gonna go across just like that. All right, and once you have sewn the side seams, then we're going to attach the binding. I have on my edge stitch foot, if you don't have an edge stitch foot, that is fine, but you want to follow along that um, placement, that casing placement line that you um, should have made on your sleeve piece. So we're going to leave a little extra um, after the seam allowance. 
I'm gonna go ahead and drop my needle down. All right, so once you have um, stitched down your bias binding and done your gatherings on the sleeve bottoms and your uh, shoulder and underarm seam, you should have one interface uh, sleeve band and one non-interface sleeve band. With your interface sleeve band, we're just going to fold and stitch at five eighths of an inch and then press your seams open. We're gonna be gathering the bottom sleeve and attaching the sleeve band. With right sides together, we are going to stitch on our sleeve band. So go ahead and match up your seams first. So go ahead and stitch your sleeve band to your sleeve at 5 eighths of an inch. I went ahead and basted down the sleeve band at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. We are going to turn the sleeve inside out. All right, so you see the interface sleeve band is turned to the inside. Grab our other sleeve band. So we're going to stitch the sleeve band in the same manner. We're going to press down half an inch on one edge and then we're gonna attach it to our sleeve. So with your folded edge going towards the sleeve, we're gonna match up our side seams and we are going to stitch in that same stitch that we just basted down the other sleeve band. And this is with your right side matching your wrong side. All right. Go ahead and base down your last sleeve band and we're gonna move on to our flounce. All right, so I have attached the sleeve band, the last sleeve band to my sleeve and we're gonna put this to the side for a second and we're gonna work on our sleeve flounce. I have added um, lining to all of my uh, sleeve pattern pieces for thickness. The next step, so we're going to sew at the side seams, matching those notches. We're gonna stitch 5 eighths of an inch for the seam allowance, and then we're gonna go ahead and do our narrow hem on the sleeve flounce, and then add your two rows of gathering stitches, and we will be attaching it to the sleeve band. With your sleeve flounce um, finished off you've already gone ahead and done your narrow hem and added your gathering stitches go ahead and gather there should also be a notch just i like to go and just pin in that area so i know when i get to a, a halfway point so make sure you keep that sleeve band folded down on the inside and we are going to pull out that interfaced sleeve band. And that's where we will be attaching right sides together with our flounce. So I'm gonna place it through the inside of the sleeve. 
and I'm going to match up my seams first. Go ahead and pin. All right, so go ahead and head over to the machine and stitch the flounce to your sleeve band at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance. So I'm going to go ahead and trim down these seam allowances. So on the inside, your sleeve band should have a, um, you should have pressed down the folded edge and it's going to look really nice. Once we pull out that flounce, your inside will be finished off. So go ahead and press your seams to the inside of your band give it a good press and then we're going to pin down from the right side and we're going to stitch in the ditch Go ahead and stitch in the ditch. All right, so I went ahead and stitched in the ditch. Our sleeve band is good. Now we can move on to inserting our elastic into our casing. So you should have an opening at your seam allowance and that's where we're gonna insert the elastic. Wrap pattern piece number seven and you can use it as a guide. You're only gonna need two pieces of elastic for each sleeve. So go ahead and cut. Right, so I like to just stick this through with a safety pin. So insert your elastic into your uh, second casing. Do a nice zigzag stitch on both pieces of your elastic and go ahead and stitch very close to the edges of your casing. Then your sleeve should look just like this once you sew everything down. Go ahead and do that and we're going to attach the sleeves. Now we're going to go ahead and gather our sleeve. Go ahead and match those underarm seams up. All right, so flip it to the inside and you can see how much you have to work with and then that's where you can start adjusting your gathering. Go ahead and stitch your um, armhole at 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then you're going to stitch another row of stitches at 1 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Trim everything down, finish it off, serge it if you like, and do the same thing to your other sleeve. All right, y'all, I have attached the sleeves and we are all done. Go ahead and give everything a good press and you're ready to wear your new top. All right, y'all, you have made it to the first half of this sew along. You should have completed your bodice B, which is your top with the elastic casing. I hope that you enjoyed this portion, but stick around for the second portion of this video, which is the skirts. Let's get started. All right, so for view C and view D, you're gonna need pattern piece number eight, which is your upper front. You're gonna cut one of fabric and one of lining. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number nine and you're gonna cut one of fabric and one of lining. You're gonna use this one for view C and view D. You're gonna cut out pattern piece number 10, which is your waist flounce, and you're gonna cut out two. Pattern piece number 11, which is also a waist flounce, the lower portion, and you're going to cut out two. Pattern piece number 12, which is your flounce for view C and D, and you're going to cut out two. All right, pattern piece number 13, this is going to be your middle flounce on view C and D. You're going to cut out two. And lastly, for view C, you're going to cut out pattern piece number 14, 
one of fabric and one of interfacing. If you are sewing view D, you will cut out the remaining lower flounce and skirt portions as directed on the pattern pieces. All right, so we have pattern piece number eight here and we're gonna go ahead and sew up our darts. You see I have already um, transferred my markings here and also my notches. And we're going to sew the darts and we're also gonna stay stitch the top edge. If you want, you can go ahead and do the same for your lining piece. And this is the same exact step for pattern piece number nine, which is your skirt back. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew all of those up and we'll come right back. All right, so I went ahead and I sewed down and pressed my darts and also did a uh, stay stitch on the top of each front and back skirt pattern piece. So now we're gonna pin um, the front and back together on the side and we're gonna stitch the upper front to the upper back at the right side edge. All right, again, you're gonna make sure you're stitching on the right side of your skirt front and back. Go ahead and do that and then press your seams open. And you can also do that for your lining. All right, so I went ahead and I surged the raw edges of my uh, skirt front and back and gave the side seam a good press. Um, I have a fabric that frays, so if you're using a fabric that frays, you wanna go ahead and finish off the raw edges. So we're gonna put this to the side and we're gonna work on our waist flounce. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and grab our top waist and bottom waist flounce and we're gonna pin them together at the right sides with right sides together. We're gonna stitch five eighths of an inch for both. And then we're going to also do a narrow hem on both pieces. Do that, come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and done my narrow hems on both um, waist flounce pieces and pinned the top edge wrong sides together. And we're gonna stitch this inner circle here at five eighths of an inch seam allowance. All right, so once you've stitched this inside edge of your waist flounce pieces, you're gonna grab your skirt. We're gonna open it up. We're going to match our notches and our seams. First thing that I'm gonna do is match my seam allowances together and go ahead and pin. All right, once you have everything pinned, go ahead and stitch this at five eighths of an inch. All right, so you should have went ahead and interfaced your waistband and I went ahead and transferred my markings. We're gonna be putting the waistband together matching the notches and this dot that you have here should match up with your uh, right side seam. So go ahead and pin that and sew everything down at five eighths of an inch. All right, so I went ahead and gave this a good press at your waistband, I trimmed the seams down and you should have um, a fold line on your waistband. So that's where you're gonna wanna stop with your um, invisible zipper. I'm gonna go ahead and install this. You can either use an invisible um, zipper foot, which I will be doing. You're gonna stop at the notch. If you've served your raw edges, you should still be able to see um, that notch there, but we're gonna stop there 
and then go ahead and finish off your invisible zipper. So do that, come back and we'll move on to the next step. All right, so I went ahead and in installed my invisible zipper. Everything should be lining up nicely, which it is. And we're going to go ahead and close off the bottom of the skirt. Start from the inside and pin off the remaining portion of the skirt. At this time, I would suggest that you try it on, see how it's fitting. We're gonna pin down the remaining portion of the skirt side seam. Be sure to pull your zipper out of the way and just go ahead and stitch down the remaining side seam of the skirt. All right, your um, skirt should be looking like this here. I went ahead and attached the invisible zipper and gave everything a good press. So um, I also have my notches marked as well. I'm, we're gonna put this to the side for a second. We're gonna work on our lining. So I went ahead and I did my darts on all pattern pieces, like I mentioned earlier. And this is my back lining piece. And my front lining piece. All right, so on this side, we're gonna stitch a half an inch under our notch at five eighths of an inch. And then we're gonna go ahead and do a narrow hem along the entire lining bottom. All right, so do that, come back and we're gonna move on to the next step. All right, so I've gone ahead and finished my lining and I have pinned it to the bottom edge that's not attached to the skirt the free edge of your waistband. And you should also have a marking on the middle of your uh, waistband that meets at your side seam of your skirt lining. So we're gonna go ahead and stitch this at five eighths of an inch, and then we're gonna turn everything to the inside. All right, so we are almost at the finish line and everything, I've given everything a good press. I uh, tried it on, make sure I like the fit. Um, everything is matching up with my zipper. Um, you will need to add a hook and eye. So I will do that off camera on, and you can do that on your own as well. But we're going to put this to the side for a second. And now we're gonna work on the last two flounce pieces. So you're gonna get the longer length flounce and we're going to stitch them together at the sides, at the side seam, you should have a notch. So go ahead and pin. All right. And we're gonna do the same thing for our shorter flounce, but I want you to go ahead and stitch five eighths of an inch for your seam allowance on each side, and then go ahead and finish off your narrow hem. All right, so I've gone ahead and I have um, done my narrow hem on both flounce pieces. If you are doing view C, this is gonna be the last, these are gonna be the last two things that you're gonna sew onto your skirt and you'll be all done. If you are doing view D, then you will continue on um, attaching uh, pattern piece number 15, 17, and 16, and 19. Um, in this so long, I'm doing view C, so we are going to finish off here. So you're gonna turn your um, flounce to the right side. And with right side of bottom flounce to wrong side of top flounce, I'm gonna slip this, we're gonna match the seam the seam allowance, pin and go ahead and stitch all the way around at five eighths of an inch. All right, y'all, so really important, something that I caught, I had to go back and <laughs> repair, fix, pull out that seam ripper. We've all been there, right? Okay, so on the lower portion or the if you're doing view D on the middle portion of the skirt, this flounce here it needs to, it has a shorter end of a flounce for each um, piece one and two of your middle flounce. 
I had uh, the shorter end on the longer end. So please make sure that when you sew this up, that the shorter end of the flounce, meaning it's not as thick because it's just slightly uh, shorter on this end versus this end here. And as you can see, this end is a little bit longer as well. So the shorter ends should match up together. Now, when you match these, the notches are gonna match no matter what, they just so happen to work out. So just make sure that you um, give that a look before you sew that down and then I went ahead and basted it. So this is the last step and you're all done with view C. I'm gonna go ahead and pin this down you should have some notches on your skirt. You're gonna pin that down, matching your side seams to these seams here. Boom, boom. All right, so let's go ahead and do that and you'll be all done. All right, y'all, that's a wrap. You have completed view B and view C. Thank you so much for tuning in and staying with me for this so long. Follow me at The Corny Rainbow on Instagram, TikTok, and on YouTube if you aren't already, where I will be sharing hacks, tips, and ways to create with my Nomi patterns. Until the next time, peace.